Welcome to the Lopes Talk podcast. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Justin. I'm here with Zach and Elvis. Uh, before we get started, please follow us on Instagram at Lopes Talk 2022. Follow us on Twitter at Lopes Talk and go to our website, lopestalk.com. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, Boise State versus GCU tonight. I want to get started with Carlos Johnson. He played 26 minutes. At 14 points, one assist, and three rebounds. Breakout game for him, in my opinion. What are you guys thinking? Great night. Great night. Um, proved me wrong today. I uh, came out with a sense of urgency. Um, looked like he, he wants his job back. But I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I think he's better off the bench. He ignites that group. Uh, very defensive group. And I think with him, it has a lot of offensive power behind it. And... Um, I like, I like I like the I like bench the moving forward. forward. Play a lot Play better a lot tonight. tonight. Um, first group has to pick has up, their, to pick up act, their act because yes. looking like the, the second, second team needs to start. start. But really, it's really just the first team needs to team. play better. Yeah. How about you, Zach? I completely agree. Um, the first group you saw them struggle throughout the, throughout the throughout the whole game. I mean, the first half they came out, they couldn't they couldn't get a stop. We fell behind early. Early in both in both halves, they they got off to a quick nine to four start, and then our defense just our defense in the first group was absolutely horrendous, as as Coach Marley even said. Um, and I think the whole Carlos thing, he's getting more comfortable. He's he's playing more as a team. He's running through through the offense more, and he when he attacks the basket, no one, in my opinion, can guard. Him. So. Uh, he, he's 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 been great off the bench so far in this in this I want to say this is his third game off the bench. I've been averaging pr- around thirteen points off the bench, which is yeah, it's, it's which like is great. Points, points per game, per game. last two yeah. uh, games mm-hmm. off, off the bench. So um, something point. I don't think gets talked about enough is they say how it's hard to play a GC arena as an away team, but I think a factor for Carlos Johnson is he comes in with his high expectations, high hopes. And he exactly. has to play in front of the Havocs. That's a lot of pressure on him, too. I, I completely yeah, agree. Coming in, coming into a school, he, he, as we all know, he was at Washington, a, big, a huge basketball school, Pac-12 school, which is huge. And then he comes into a, a smaller, a, I want to say a smaller environment, but it's not really. It's just a completely different feel for him. He comes into a, he comes into a, a, a school where he doesn't know a lot about I mean yes he's from Arizona but I think you start seeing after these last few games how much more comfortable he's getting playing under Dan Marley's offense and to a certain extent you know you can't be baby him he's a, he's a junior and I see where Marley's coming, coming from yeah you got tired of it and put him on the bench so that's instead, what I love about Marley he, yeah, he's yeah. completely honest with you he, he'll he'll sit his best players as he did tonight and as he's done with Carlos Carlos and Carlos and Lever are supposed to be the two key components to this game. And as you saw, he'll, he will bring our best players off the bench, and he'll bring Lever in. He'll keep Lever off the bench until we need him. And when you, when you put in your best player with two minutes left, you expect him to come through, and Lever did that perfectly tonight. That's yeah. why we he's, he's a coach that doesn't care about the player, cares about the team, cares about exactly. the player. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, this is and D1. Think, he's got to, Carlos got to understand this is D1 still. And he's got to perform. Play at a high-level high Pac-12. Pac-12. He's got to come here, here, lead this team to a ultimate, ultimate natty. natty. We want to see you. So to continue with Carlos Johnson, I just want to say I'm not a huge fan of the double-arm sleep. I'm just being real. I'm more of a one-arm <laughs> sleep type either. of guy. That's, I think it looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I don't like this trend that we're having that like it's Drexel. Mill sad. Mill sad was repping one tonight. <laughs> like, see, and, see, I think, see, I think go, the wideout. They I, got a little. They got a little excited for the wideout. We go. We our team goes weird. They go double arm sleeve, but then one leg sleeve. Like I feel like and, it should be reversed. You know then, what I mean? Yeah, honest with you, Carlos's little stupid uh, sleeve thing's got to go. <laughs> I mean, are we playing? Are we playing middle school ball here? Or are we playing D one basketball here? It what? looks like we're playing middle school ball. What is what? What are you talking about? 
his uh, little ponytail on his uh, jerseys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the I, know, I, I tell like, him, uh, stop scrunching the jersey up, dude. My gosh. Hey, it's been working the past three games, huh? Uh, I guess so. Hey, stick with it, I guess. So, as great as Carlos Johnson was, Michael Finke was quiet this game. He played 13 minutes at six points, one rebound. Re- disappeared after the first half. After he was taken out, and I don't think he really came on ever again. I I think I know the problem. If you look if you look at the game and watch the highlights of the game, you saw Boise State. They were they were small. They were really small, and that's why Marley saw that. And during the second half, we played a very small lineup. I mean, um, Matt Jackson, number five, was was running the center, and he's a he's a power forward who can shoot a shooting forward, if you will. And uh, as as Marley said, Finky uh, was having a hard time guarding their players. They're they're quicker than. They they weren't as big as them, but they were quicker than him. And he couldn't and he couldn't guard them. So I think that's what led to his decrease in playing time in the second half. Yeah, and you, and you saw tonight because that, that's going to hurt us sometimes. Uh, mm-hmm. Teams will be faster than us because which was a big team, top five biggest team in the NCAA. So we're gonna get we're gonna be um, coming up to teams where they're gonna be faster and they're and they're gonna be smarter and go smaller line. But I think going. that's why we're special. Yeah, because we have we have players. We have players. I mean, tip your cap to Gerald Martin. He played. He was quiet on offense. He had a huge bucket in the last two minutes of the game that tied the game. But I mean, I couldn't even count how many charges he had tonight. Yeah. I just want to comment. I think the top five tallest team is Elvis's favorite fact about the GC Lopes. I do love. I've it. heard him. It's. I, I think it. it's his favorite stat. It is my first. I, I, th- I think it'll help us way more than it hurts us. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, our two, our, two well, of our best shooters are big guys. Well, you saw today that we can win going small ball. Exactly. And I our, think that's huge. It, it's it's that's almost huge. like we came out today and we said, okay, our guards are good too. It's not, we're not just a big man team. That's what, that's what I like today. Mm-hmm. And looking at the stats, our defense won this game. We had our lowest scoring game with 69 points. We shot 40% from the field, 30% from threes, and we shot 56 from the line. Oh, yeah. No, um... When you hold a team to 67, you should win. You should win the game. Um, 69 points. We should be scoring more than that. And I think a lot of missed free throws yeah. is the reason why we had 69. I think if you make free throws, I think we'll be at around 75, 80. I think it shows you how special of a team we are. I mean, look at Lever and Michael Finke. They combined for maybe, I think, less than, less than 10, 15 yeah. Fink, uh, Michael Finke had nine six. points the first like three minutes of the game. Yeah. Six. Points. Michael Michael fin- he finished with six. Our free exactly. percentage yeah. was fifty five point six percent, which is terrible. Yeah. So our two yeah. big guys, two of our best players, had less than fifteen points combined, and we still won the game. Yeah. I think yeah. Drexel came up huge in the first half. He went on a run by himself. Freyer made some nice shots, and, and the the reason we won that game is because of our bench ball. And the past three games, that's the reason we won that game. Marley is gonna go with which team is running, is playing the best. He he said he'll shoot his starters, and that's what I like about him. He's 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 a completely honest coach with you. And, and if his star players aren't playing well, he's gonna bench them. But I do I think do we had one of the best shooting nights, nights today. Yeah. What do you mean we had the best no. shooting nights? Like uh, that we statistically it was horrendous. Uh, forty eight percent is not terrible. It's not terrible. Uh, yeah, with thirty percent from the three and fifty six from the our, line. Our like, defense definitely won us that game. No, yeah, it, it did. But we we at, at points, I thought our shooting was a lot better than, it's, than I've ever seen it at points. We, we we shot better against Seton Hall and lost that game, well, and that's because well, Seton Hall is a great see, team. See, that's the difference is when when you play a team like that's that of that caliber, the ball's moving so fast that yeah, they'll yeah, they'll, they'll go off for eighty five points. But since they're scoring at such a high percentage and, and so fast it gives us another opportunity to score you know what i mean since today today was just a defensive game the the, the time um the shot clock was down to about five seconds every time someone shot meaning that you're not gonna have a lot of opportunities to score so yeah when, when you play a high caliber team like let's say we play duke we'll have one of our best shooting nights just because how fast the game is I think today was a lot slower, and that's why you see the numbers so low. 
I just want to comment on the atmosphere of this game. It was, for me personally, the most fun I've had at any GCU game we've been to. It's the reason I came to this school. The student section was absolutely bananas today. Oh, it was pretty at the end of the game. The student uh, section it, was pretty no, ridiculous. No, it was ridiculous. Redu- the, end, yeah. uh-huh. the, end, the end of that game was just stupid pandemonium. Like, yeah. it was, I don't think anyone was not yelling, really. No, great environment. Hey. This is why we're one of the best uh, environments in the country. Um, hey. People underestimate how hard it is to play under under, under such an electric environment and non-friendly for the opposing team. Even I mean, we could, players, we could even our own players. We could we could we could barely hear each other talking, and we were right next to each other. Think of having to be on a basketball court where you're farther away. away. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, like, I think after the game when uh, my favorite part was after the game when Jared Martin is talking to uh, <laughs> one of our anchors. <laughs> yeah. She, she, asked she asked him a question, question and he goes, I don't know what you just said, said, but we had a great game. game. I love that. That just shows that. How, how loud it was that was today. Great game. Great game. I think, yeah, I think it was a turning point, especially for Carlos Johnson tonight. Exactly. He made his, he made a huge three and I thought that turned, that, that turned around for turned, his game. And the game in general. Yeah, that's honest. what I mean. Yeah, it turned around the game and it turned around his game. Great, 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 great move. Great move by Carlos. I think I think that dude's ankles may still be in the gym. Yeah, yeah. Ignited the, the crowd. Oh, for sure. Yeah, the crowd went wow crazy. Yeah. I think the more Carlos is aggressive towards the hoop, the more it opens up his jump. But he's got to be smart about it. He's got to be smart. Mm-hmm. He can't and just be going to the basket. I guess three people, but you know, I like him being aggressive. But he's got to know when to be aggressive. No yeah. one to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's got to, he's just got to be smarter. And I, I just want to comment that uh, at one point uh, near the end of the game, I leaned over to Elvis and said, we need to play Mo Bamba to get this crowd. They played Mo Bamba, <laughs> and that's minute. when the crowd went. That that was the hypest I think the crowd was besides, like, the last minute of the game. Yeah. It was – it just – that song, I don't know what it does. It makes the GCU Havocs just go crazy. And I think the next three weeks for the Lopes are going to be tough, very important. Tough. They're tough. And we're going to – if we don't win the games, I know we're going to compete with them. We can compete with any team. Next Sunday is a huge game for GCU, um, not only for moving forward for conference games, but a huge, huge play, play for the whole – just a national ranking. If, um, um, if we beat we Nevada, Nevada – We'll be up there. Yep. We'll be ranked, we'll be ranked. for sure. sure. I, I don't know I about don't know top, about top 10. 10. This is also the top, top five team. Five. We'll, 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 we'll be in the we'll 20s, 20s, for sure. You guys, uh, it's pretty cool how GCU travels throughout the state. Would you guys agree? We have yeah. a bus going to New Mexico State. Yeah. All that. I, I think, think, that's, I think really that's, cool. that's... I think that speaks to the school itself, that they, they put money They put yeah. money into the students Yeah. more than anything. They want us to still have... I mean, because the bus ride to New Mexico is going to be free, I think, right? Uh, it's a free bus for it? Havocs, I think. Yes. I think correct. it's free for Havocs. Wow. Yeah. And they come back the same day? Uh, I'm not, we don't, they didn't really tell us, but, but like the fact, and even if it's still the trip to Cal State Fullerton for a hotel and for a meal like was 20 bucks. 20 bucks. I mean, you saw how many fans we had there during Thanksgiving. Yeah. Which was, uh, Amazing. It's just GCU is on the rise, and I think that's what makes this place. No, I, I think we're here at a special, a special moment, moment in uh, GCU's history, and yeah, it's just it's just crazy. crazy. Just today, we found out that track and field has won WAC champions. Uh, what an amazing accolade! And our and our swimming team is, is putting up a show. Really, but by the time we graduate. Uh, one sport or the other is going to be in a better conference. Yep. For sure. Yeah, probably. I'd agree with that. For sure. So, moving on from the game. So, this is a personal experience I had over Thanksgiving break that I actually haven't brought up to you guys yet. And so, I want to bring it up now. So, I'm at the Ducks game. And they're doing t-shirt launches. <laughs> and those things come out so quickly the the girl points at me 
shoots it at me. It's it's about ten feet high. But that thing soared past me at about ninety miles per hour. <laughs> and my my, it, my it was close. <laughs> I, I didn't I, I reached for it, but it was it was past me well, by the time I had my hand it? out. You didn't catch it? No, it, it was dude dude, my dad was behind me higher up and he didn't even have the time to catch it. <laughs> like it was so fast. Dude, those if I was worried they're just gonna turn and just blast someone like two rows in front of them and kill them. You guys saw think, at the CU football game where their mascot tried to do that and it hit him in the wrong spot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, those things like those things could be considered weapons. Like those things are hazards, man. Um, I, I'm I'm happy Thunder doesn't have one because, <laughs> dude, that America's would be America's greatest mascot. Thunder just, just he'd be. He'd be going to kids and just blast them into oblivion. Right. They, they'd ha- <laughs> it would be crazy. Talk about like NHL. NHL, Justin. Yes. Who is your MVP so far? Uh, there it is. That's the question. Oh, oh. Okay, is it, is it in my head, three, three, I'm not going to be biased. Three, three players come to my head. Three players come to my head. It should be two avalanche. It's Nathan McC- it's John Gibson. <laughs> wow. And and, and Ryan then. Okay. It's okay. those three. I just when's the last time a goalie won an MVP? A couple of years ago. Really? Who was it? Yeah. Um who who's the goalie for Washington and I why can't I think of his name Hopey. right now? Um was it I think it was Hopey. Let me look it up. I it, it sounds ridiculous that you have Gibson in there, but you're completely right. I mean, he's kept that team. Well, he, he's the only he's team. Like, he's the only reason why the team is doing so well. I think yeah. lately, lately. Oh, it's I can like he he keeps. Oh, it was Carey Price in 2014. Yeah, Carey Price yeah. makes sense. So it doesn't happen often, but they they get so. They don't get credited enough. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah, they really. Don't. I I think goal is like it, it's is like offensive of linemen in football. I mean, yeah. if if they yeah. are working, then how is your offense going to well, work? The other As, day, Justin and I were talking about it, and um, they said that Gibson has has seen, has seen a, like seven hundred and something shots. shots. Yeah. So so we were looking at the goals against average, and um, it was uh, Gibson faced three hundred more shots than the guy who has the highest. Goals against average, and so I remember the stat was Gibson has allowed fifty three goals, and the guy who's in first has has allowed thirty in three hundred less shots. Just crazy. It's crazy. I don't know that that could be MVP numbers. Could be right. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's definitely Vesna numbers. Definitely, it definitely is up there for Vesna. With the best goalie what, in the league. What I like about hockey is it's not as political as other sports, if that makes sense. Like it's not necessarily about the story. Exactly. More who is the best. Exactly. Well, well, the thing I like about NH, about NHL, they have so many awards. There's not like – because like in basketball, you get the the you MVP get talk. Yeah. Like LeBron is the most valuable player. But the MVP award isn't necessarily the most valuable player. It's who had the best season. That's what it turns into it more. Like if, so if, like, if Christian Yelich uh, didn't win the MVP in baseball, it would have been absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. The, the I, dude carried their team played through amazing. the whole playoffs. Played throughout the whole year. If, if Javi Baez would have won that, it would have been ridiculous. because. Yeah. Oh, there would have been riots. I think that would be yeah. the first time you heard a riot come from Milwaukee. Well, he he never, player, played, but never played that well in Miami. Oh. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Well, and considering he was having Barry Bonds levels numbers the second <laughs> half of the season, like, I would hope he'd win. Not on PEDs. Let's remember yeah. that. <laughs> and, and he's a very skinny player. Yeah. Very lanky man. He is. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that comedian from uh, SNL that he looks like? Oh, P, uh, Pete Davidson? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... I think unless do you guys do you guys have anything else you want to talk about at all? Um, I do actually. Okay. Like Oregon, Oregon losing, losing today. today. Oh my goodness. Uh, any comments? I guess Houston Cougars. 
Like like I said, and people laugh when I say it. How any team can win on any night. So people laugh when say GCU can't compete with top. We'll compete with Nevada 100 percent. Because Bobo had a night. night. Seven for 14, 50 percent from the field, twenty three points. points. I think college basketball is one of the most things where any team can win on any night. Out of all the sports out there, Houston came out and put him in the mouth. I'd say I'd say I'd agree with you on college basketball. I'd say the NHL too. I mean, uh-huh. I mean the the Ducks lost to the Predators, who were the best team, and beat the second best team the next night. People can have star players, but if you go to the MLB, like if you see Verlander on the mound against a no name, you obviously know you're almost positive who's going to win that game. You yeah. know what I mean? But basketball, like. I'd say when looking at it, basketball is one of the sports where it's like it's so star driven because your star plays the it's whole gotten game. It's gotten better, yes, but you're still yeah. like yeah, like like the fact that LeBron's team in the in the East was basically he was a lot six six years in a row. Was it six or seven where he was in the conference? He was yeah. in the finals every year. Oh yeah, I mean if Cause we, he he single handedly carried all of those teams. He basically. Started in the Heat. From the Heat, yeah. he's never been. I mean, not been not, in the. The finals. Yeah. If the Warriors are completely healthy, they're they're not beatable. They're they not. they really aren't. They're not. Yeah, but is... they haven't been completely healthy. And that's why they're they've been scuffing a little and, bit. And now. I think the whole thing with Draymond is really, yeah. really uh-huh. breaking that out their chemistry. That really killed me. Uh, it's, I it's could see them fun. trading Draymond. I could. Uh, yeah, I've never been a fan of Draymond. I, I'm a huge fan of Draymond. Great, Draymond. great player, but. But that chemistry is obviously not yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Go. They're going to trade him just because of chemistry wise. And that's mm-hmm. yeah. It well, sucks, cause, cause that's how it is. Because Steph and KD seem to get along, and if you have, and Steph is like the backbone of that team, you don't, don't really think about it necessarily. Their record's yeah. so much better with Steph. It's him, crazy. Him and, Claire, him and Claire are the backbone of that team. They've been there the longest. They've they've yeah. got together good. Yeah, exactly. It's I think it's still going to be. They're vulnerable, and that's what kind of makes this year interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they're a vulnerable team. I got two more games to put into perspective here. You got Nevada versus USC Trojans. So, Nevada's our next team we're playing. Number five, eight and zero. Played a USC team who is uh, good, but I would say amazing. What's their record? Uh, five and three, like, just like us. Okay. And they lost. Cool. Pretty legit. And it was pretty close, close the entire, entire game. game. So, so, what was the final? Nine, uh, 73 61. Huh. So, it wasn't a complete blowout. I, I really I think really we got a chance versus Nevada. Oh, where was it Call played? Just wondering. At USC. Let's play at USC. Uh, at USC. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I really think we got a chance here. Uh, beating Nevada, number five team. And we and, shock, and shock the world here. Well, and I think. A good thing going into that is the Havoc section will still exactly. be yep. – it will still be a home game for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even though it's at Talking Stick, it will still be a home game. It'll be – it'll just be in a bigger arena, obviously. With, yeah. Which, yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll probably be – it'll probably be worse for them. Yeah. I think almost whole school is going. Then we, we, yeah. we got in line at GCBC, and it wrapped around the whole coffee shop. About 15 times. Yeah. I will say, our roommate Thomas came in clutch for that, being there earlier than us. Because if not, we'd have been there for about an hour. Yeah, I would have missed class. Yeah. <laughs> so, Thomas Nelson, he's not here today. But he came in clutch. Uh, gave us a ticket. and we're, we'll, we'll be ready for Sunday. Can I say, I'm excited for the Gonzaga game. I'm just excited to see an, the number one team play. Yeah, I, I want to see how good they are, really. Um, we've seen him on TV. seen him play against Duke. Played well against Duke, defensively, actually. Uh, I want to see just how good they are, what pieces they have, and just see if we compete against them in the tournament. I want to see how we stack up against them. Oh, I want to. I want to comment on something. I I started dying earlier when we were taught. Uh, the guys was announcing the Sunday game, so he goes, "Who's Gonzaga playing?" Uh, Tennessee. Yeah. So it was uh, number one Gonzaga versus number six Tennessee, and then number five. So he's like, <laughs> "So we have the number one team in the country." the number five team in the country, number six, and then us. And he's like, who, who we're the number one team. Point. Yeah, he's like, but we're the number one team. I started laughing. I'm like, yeah, number six, yeah, he was happy number up, one. He was happy <laughs> of how good the, tur- like the, the class is going to be. And yeah, like, and it's like, oh, we have GCU. 
Yeah, I was like, eh. but don't get me wrong. We're, we're number one. We're, we're we're gonna be a top team tournament. And I I'm excited to get my sweatshirt. Yeah. Because those the first 500 kids get oh, a sweet oh, we'll, sweatshirt. We'll be there early, and we should have a we'll have a pregame po- uh, podcast ready for you guys, breaking down Nevada and what players they got. They got these two I think, twins. And I think it was good that DC lost. It wasn't good, but it was good for the players to know. That they lost to two good teams in the tournament, but it, it opens up minds that they can compete with anyone. Exactly. Because I, 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 I feel like they, I came, up, they, they came into that tournament saying, you know, let's, let's give it a try. Let's, let's see. We can compete. Let's see. You know, yeah, I mean, they didn't really they didn't, they didn't think they could beat Seen Hall, and, and they almost said they really they Seen Hall won. won the tournament, and we lost to them by less than double digits. Played a good, played a good uh, uh, University of Miami, Miami team, team. Uh, uh, for the championship and won by two. Seen Hall is a great team. UM is a great team. A lot of great teams in that tournament. tournament. And that, that goes into my next game here. LaSalle almost beating Villanova. What a great game by LaSalle. Uh, I don't know if it's a great game by LaSalle or a bad game by Villanova. Probably it, it, was a, it was a great game by LaSalle. I was tuning into it, and and it was it was, it was well played by both teams. Yeah. yeah. LaSalle 0-8 on the year, but really playing well. Really playing well. Gave GCU, Gave GCU a hard, a hard time, time throughout, throughout the game. game. Mm-hmm. We didn't pull we didn't away pull until away like about the fourth quarter. If I if I remember correctly, the Sal was winning most of the first half. Yeah, yeah. no, I think they were on a nine, nine hole run. Yeah, so, so, yeah. La Sal's no, no team to play, to play with, with but, but no college team is any team to play with. No, as no, you've no. seen the first three weeks of the season. And, and, and there's you know they were in the tournament for a reason. They the they, they're not a bad they're team. They just lost some close games. So yeah, yeah. this is just, uh, just I, another I, testament that GCU, GCU is ready for, ready for to be to be nationally ranked. I have one thing to say, and then I want to transition into something else. But I I want to go back to the home game real quick. I just want to say Boise State's jerseys were pretty sick. They were. I thought they were. They, I thought they looked pretty sweet. You know the Knicks, super cool. Yeah, the the black with the orange with the and blue. blue and orange. Yeah, really they cool. look really cool. Really jerseys. good. You have to give credit to both teams. Both teams played good. Oh, boy. Yeah, State's it was a great game. Boy, State's a hell of a team. Great hell team. team. Dude, that... Well, uh, Number 23? Yeah, the guy who got, like, seven steals, it felt like. Yeah, yeah. amazing player. Uh, he just, pit, just knew where the ball was going to go. Yeah, Mar- Marley said after the game, he said, I told my guys what was going to happen, and he still did it about five times in the game. It's a great player. You know, Okay, so... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, no, 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 there's, just going to say that there's players out there that you try to game plan for. But uh, a player like 23 on Boy State will do what they're good at, and that's what he's good at, uh, hitting the ball on transition. So, ahead, okay, so I, I'm, I'm going to transition to uh, – it was championship weekend for NCAA football. Big game today was uh, – Alabama beating Georgia thirty-five to twenty-eight. How does this shake up the playoffs? Because only uh, four teams get in. Georgia uh, was fourth. I think, I think Georgia, Georgia, makes Georgia it. belongs in the college yeah, football yeah. playoffs. I, I I completely agree with that. Yeah. Even Nick Saban said. It. Nick Saban yeah. said. They, they, Nick Saban straight up said that I don't want to play. Yeah. And if college I, football doesn't, the commissioner's office doesn't put them in, and I think that's. I that's kind of I kind of think the top four stay the same. As they are right now. Also commenting on that well, game. Um, is, is Georgia in the top four right now? I don't think so. Yeah, there they were are? four. There were four coming into this week. It was uh, they, Bama, they, Clemson, Notre Dame, them. They could be number two, number three. Uh, that guy, I, I think if Bama doesn't win it, Georgia does, really. Uh, Georgia's a great team with a great quarterback. And they were really close to winning last year. I thought they they should have. Um, so look out for Georgia this year. Really. I think... People underestimate this, but what makes Bama so special is their quarterback situation. I mean, you see Tua comes in last year. He absolutely balls out. And as any other quarterback, they would they would down their head. They'd be mad. And Jalen Hurts, their backup, is, is an unbelievable person. He comes in today. He leads his team back to an amazing, amazing victory. I mean, he was 7 for 9 passing, 82 yards and a touchdown, and he Rush thirty yards in the touchdown. I think it's unbelievable how those two 
how the, those two are pretty much brothers. I mean, they're always there for each other, taking each other up yeah. through the good and the bad. I think that's. I, I saw question. a tweet. It was. It was. Uh, it's been a crazy yeah. year for Jalen Hurts. Well. Last yeah. year, he gets they win because they take him out against Georgia. This year, they beat Georgia because they put him in. Yeah. No, that, that that's that's the luxury of uh, Alabama. They're such a great program that even their backups are better than other team starters. They're a great team, top to bottom. Um, uh, Jay, Jacobs today, eight carries, 83 yards, two touchdowns, a huge factor for today for Alabama. And um, Waddle, with four receptions, 113 yards, one touchdown. Just Jake Fromm, unbelievable game, though. Oh, yeah. 301 yards, three touchdowns. 25 for 39. Wow. Three touchdowns. I have a question. I have a question for everyone here. Could Alabama beat the Oakland Raiders? No, no, not even close. No. They could. No. Okay, good. I'm happy. I'm happy. We all agree on this podcast. Say, I, like, I'm happy here. about that answer. And it's just, it's no. I think I'm it's sorry. funny when people say college teams could be in a, like yeah. they, they get teams. destroyed. Because because we're talking about a team that has a couple NFL players against a team that is literally full of NFL players. Exactly. Uh, they underestimate you, how good NFL teams are or, or professional teams are for yeah. that matter. You've seen yeah, so sure. many good college players do they're, terrible. They're the best in college. They won Heisman and then they come in the NFL and are, are just complete yeah. snubs. Johnny Menzel. Look Tim at Tebow. My, Miles Tim Garrett Tebow. was unblockable in college and he's had a he's had a quiet year. Yeah. RG3, RG3, the RG3. Other one. RG3. All these guys, guys won the Heisman, the Heisman but they get mm-hmm. to the they league the and they the coaches just coaches find a way to, way to scheme up something to stop them, make them I mean, non-existent. From guys that tend to win the Heisman are very kind of scrambly, will make the play on the go type of thing. That doesn't work in the NFL because no, those guys are so those guys are so disciplined. They'll yeah, just stick yeah. with you and then take you down because they're not true yeah. quarterbacks. I think to be in the NFL, you have to be a, a true quarterback before you use your athletic ability. Um, so there's athletic quarterbacks and guys winning highest wins. They're uh, quarter, they are athletes who are quarterbacks, exactly. And not exactly. quarterbacks who are athletic. Exactly. And I think even if you get drafted first overall, you, you're going to be a good player, but it's going to take two or three years for you to become the best of yourself. Yeah, and I, and I think don't, the, I'm sorry to cut you off. You, you don't come in the NFL and just it just dominate as a rookie. It yeah. takes you yeah. Yeah. multiple years to. And I, that's what that's what know who you are. No, go ahead. I think that's the problem. Um, guys who win the Heisman, they're just think overhyped, they're and, yeah. and they think they're the best. And they come mm-hmm. in, and, and the NFL, the fans are just acting like, like want so much out of them that they go in there and they choke. And they try. I mean, to look at Baker. He's had a great, he's had yeah. a great rookie year, but in two to three years, he'll be ten times better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. what I was. I was really about to say. That's what's so impressive to me about both Baker Mayfield and Saquon Barkley. They're both yeah, and playing. Saquon's, They're both, be... Saquon's already one of the best backs, running backs yeah. in the league, and he's a rookie. Yeah. Like, yeah. think of how scary he'll be in three yeah. years. I've yeah. said it before. I think Baker will be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He's the a thing great that's player. different. The thing that's different about Baker than like a Johnny Manziel is he he's walked on to two teams. He's played. He's grinded. He wasn't given the position in any situation. Not saying Johnny Manziel necessarily was, but like, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's had yeah. to no. fight and claw mm-hmm. his way to everything he's wanted. He's a very humble very guy. Humble. If you've seen his interviews, he's yeah. very, humble. very humble. He's a hard worker, hard worker. Um, to the grind, the grind kind of guy. Uh, he's always working. always working. He went from he went a small, from small D1, D1 school, school to walking on at a big D1, D1 and, and just playing his, playing his, his ass off. Great play. Great play. And he's been playing better with uh, the new offensive coordinator. I the think firing just, of Hugh Jackson was was what the Browns needed. Yeah, because yeah. like they've been playing the the Browns are in playoff contention. Yeah, yeah they're in the but, hunt. Wait, no, let me repeat that. The Browns <laughs> are in the playoff hunt. Playoffs? I'm talking about playoffs? <laughs> the the <laughs> Browns are, are in the playoff hunt. The team that's that won a game yeah. over <laughs> two years. The Browns <laughs> have as difference. many wins as the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Let me repeat that. The Browns have as many wins as the Green Bay Packers. 
Dude, that like we were always Super Bowl <laughs> contenders. And to be honest with you, I think yeah. if Baker started the season, they'd be better yeah. off right now. Oh yeah, I agree. It's Hugh, Hugh Jackson was because I do agree, I do that, agree that, that when you get a rookie quarterback, quarterback, you should slow him into the process. process. But, there's but there's sometimes, sometimes when one, that kind that of a player, 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 the player has, has to be starting, starting as soon as he gets there because of how good he is. What I what I thought was really funny uh-huh. when when Hugh Jackson goes to a division rival in the Bengals, and then his four oh, former my player, Demarius Randall, picks it off and hands the ball to him. <laughs> no, my favorite my favorite part is uh, Hugh Jackson going to hug Baker, and Baker's like, "Nope." Yeah. Yeah. Like, we'll, we'll do we'll fake the little Dak the my Dak thing, anybody. but yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna even even in the press, I'm not gonna say I like you. Yeah. No. no. Spe- speaking of uh, the the Packers, real quick, I I just kind of want to throw this out there that you know how there's always discussion about their head coach and Aaron Rodgers just not working not on the same page uh-huh. what and aaron Rodgers isn't looking aaron Rodgers here what if he's doing this on purpose to get a new head coach to be honest with you yeah. I, I think he should leave green bay uh, i know he loves green bay i love i know he loves wisconsin and everybody, everybody there, there but it, it's just it's not the fit for him anymore uh they really i'm gonna, dis- I'm gonna disagree with you a little bit uh we disagree with who elvis okay mike mccarthy is the problem he he's he's been there a little too long, and I think Rogers' injuries haven't been helping him. He he doesn't have a lot of weapons on offense. He does. No, he, he has Devonte Adams and Aaron Jones. Randall Cobb's been hurt the whole year. And Jimmy Graham's not the Jimmy Graham that he was on the Seahawks. Well, and Jimmy Graham started last week with a broken thumb. Yeah, I know. That's how that's like like. They have like four rookie receivers, I swear. A, a, a catching tight end starting with a broken thumb yeah. is not going to end well. So like, this is, this is going to be McCarthy's last year. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is this, and, I, and I already heard rumors that Denver's. I'm saying that, that Aaron Rodgers is being mistreated almost by Green Bay. Because such a great quarterback like Rodgers, an elite quarterback, probably. Well, probably, probably, best. probably. Yeah, he is oh, the only quarterback. No, yeah. I'm saying Rogers, like probably one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now because he's top two, top two besides Brady. Yeah. Um, should, uh, be should be respected. Should be uh, uh, almost like a, uh, another part, another of, part the, of the the GM, GM or, the or the head coach. coach. I could almost see them kind of wanting to merge him into a a player offensive coordinator kind of thing, where basically he just kind of gets to go out there and be like, "Hey, this is what we're doing." Like Peyton, you know what I mean? Was, Petty Manning, LeBron James of the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, like like have him be a player coach situation because he's so like hearing him talk. He's so smart and he has such great vision. He'll read a defense and just be like, "Okay, we're doing this. Don't care. We don't need an offensive coordinator to tell me what I'm seeing." You know what I mean? And you like put, you put Rodgers on the Chiefs with all those weapons. I mean, he's he's Mahomes. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. If you give Rodgers. A great, great O line, which his O line this, this year has year played, played terrible. terrible. If you give him a great O line and a and decent, decent defense, defense with weapons, let's put. Think of if Aaron Rod, Aaron Rodgers, was on the Rams. Oh, oh man, they'd be unbeatable. They're already making they, Goff look like Brett Favre in his prime. They, dude, they would they would be undefeated. Still, I I honestly believe that. Oh, they would win by fifty every game. That would be unfair. Yeah, it would, totally <laughs> they would be they would be the the, the warriors, warriors in their prime. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It would be like it's just like why why are we even doing this right now? Like we all know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Well, any anything else, guys? Or no, I think that's it. Uh, another thing. It's, so a great game. I do see you today. Looking forward to uh, Sunday. We'll come back to another podcast, podcast before the game, pre-game, pre-game break down break everything. everything. Let okay, talk, so uh, thanks for everyone who's listening to this. Yeah, uh, follow us on. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Lopes Talk Twenty Twenty Two on Twitter at Lopes Talk. Follow, go to our website, lopestalk.com. We're on YouTube at Lopes Talk. Um, wreak havoc and see you guys later.